It's been estimated that well over 100,000 young Americans, more women than men, by the way, it might surprise you to know, more than 100,000 young Americans came to Canada during the years of the Vietnam War, some deserters like myself, most dodging the draft. Years later, when it was possible to go home, about 50,000 of them did. For the rest of us, Canada had become home. Against all reason, the instinct that led us here in our northern migration had found for us not just a temporary sanctuary, but an end of the homesickness for the place we'd never been. There were other times when that still small voice led me to places pure reason would have denied me, getting married at the age of 25, becoming a parent at 30, when the Cold War seemed certain to end in a thermonuclear Armageddon. Most recently, my instincts told me it was time to hang up my headphones and look for something new to do. Reasonable people reminded me that mandatory retirement was no longer the law. I could enjoy the stimulation of my job for years to come. But that still small voice had been waking up with me at 4 in the morning for 15 years, and we both agreed we'd been there and done that, and it was time to do something else. Now, I'd be willing to bet, as I tell my own stories to you, that there are hundreds of you out there who have been reflecting on decisions made or about to be made and weighing the rightness of them by whether they were reached because of or in spite of what your instincts told you. I'm hardly here to tell you to ignore all the rational reasons you've carefully weighed in determining the direction of your lives, but pure reason has its limits. Albert Einstein himself said, the only valuable thing is intuition. There's one more quote that couldn't possibly be left out of my talk today. It comes from the brilliant philosopher and mythologist Joseph Campbell, with whom my wife studied at Sarah Lawrence College in the 60s. It's frequently this quote misunderstood, but in its simplest form has inspired everyone from George Lucas, who wrote Star Wars with Campbell in mind, to the author of a book called Do What You Love and the Money Will Follow. The three simple words are, follow your bliss. Follow your bliss. And only you, of course, could possibly know what that word bliss means in your own case. And while you blissfully consider that question a small reality check, actually it came to me as I was writing this speech on my iPhone, which has uh, word processing software that uses something called predictive typing. In order to save keystrokes, it tries to anticipate what you're typing and it fills in the rest of the word. So I was typing away, you know, and I, I typed follow your bliss, and I looked down and what I saw was follow your blisters. And I'm thinking this thing is smarter than even it knows. <laughs> because Campbell never wanted us to imagine that following our bliss was itself blissful. The journey would be the reward, however difficult, because its goal was the true fulfillment of who we are. So graduates of 2010, follow your bliss, follow your blisters, and may both help you realize the true treasure of the years you spent at York University. Thank you.